Lead in the drinking water leads to one of Michigan's biggest cities declaring a state of emergency. The mayor of Flint is here. Digs and jabs, but did anything change? We'll talk about where the presidential race stands today. And welcome to Bangladesh. Today is Sunday, December 20th, 2015, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, and welcome to Flashpoint. I hope you're having a good weekend as we get set to move into Christmas week. Uh, this past week was another extremely interesting one. On the political front, I must say I am among those who often shortchange the primary battles because generally it's all about style points. You don't usually see wide areas of disagreement among members of the same party. But Tuesday night showed us that among the Republican candidates, there is an enormous agreement gap on issues of national security. What to do about Syria, the future of Bashar al-Assad, and how to move forward with Russia and Vladimir Putin. These are deeply critical issues, and we see cavernous divides in the GOP over the best strategies and priorities in the international arena. Also, a great debate about censoring the internet. Where do your liberties begin and end? Ben Franklin memorably said that those who would trade liberty for temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Still true, or are these extraordinary times? We're going to talk about that this morning. We're also going to talk about the state of emergency declared in the city of Flint. We've talked quite a bit about the lead in Flint's drinking water. If you thought it was uh, leaded water under the bridge by now, the mayor of Flint would beg to differ. Mayor Karen Weaver is here. And great cities have terrific ethnic enclaves. Chinatown, Little Italy, on and on. How about Bangladesh? It's here and we'll have the introduction. It's all this morning on Flashpoint. All right, this week, the mayor of Flint declared a state of emergency around the city's water supply. As you probably know, when the city switched from the Detroit water system to the Flint River, the city had to add many harsh chemicals to the water. So many, in fact, it corroded the inside of the pipes, allowing lead to leach into the water. And many residents of Flint believe it took officials way too long to do anything about it. I'm very happy to have with me this morning the new mayor of Flint, the first woman, in fact, ever elected to that post. Mayor Karen Weaver joins us by Skype from Flint. Mayor Weaver, I really appreciate your time this morning morning. Let me start by asking you why the state of emergency. I know that uh, for uh, rules uh, wise, when you're trying to access uh, funding and emergency money, you have to declare a state of emergency. But do you, do you believe that a state of emergency still exists over the water supply in Flint today? Uh, yes, I sure do. And what you said is exactly right. For us to get the federal funding that I believe and, and the residents of Flint believe we deserve and we know that we need, we have to go through this process of a state of emergency. But we are still in a critical situation here in the city because, like you said, we have made the switch back to Detroit water, so we're moving in the right direction. However, because of the damage that's done to the pipes, we're still unable to, to use the water. So this could go on because we know it could take up to six months, maybe longer. We're not really sure how long it will take for that biofilm to get back on the pipes. So in the meantime, we're still uh, experiencing water that we can't use. You've got to kind of recreate a lining for the inside of the pipes now. So what's the best case scenario for how quickly this could be done? <laughs> the best case scenario, I mean, we'd like to have that happen within two months, but we just don't know, and we're going yeah. to have to continue to monitor and test, test that before we can uh, let the public have access to that water. So in the meantime, we know that's the quickest things could happen, but... Uh, if, that, if that's going to be the case or not, we don't know. We know it could take up to six months or longer. And so we're continuing with the filter program that we have in place. Yeah. We're continuing uh, also with uh, educating people and letting them know don't be comfortable because we have made the switch. And if they have been exposed to lead, we want them to know about a diet for lead exposure. So there's a lot we have to do. We still have to get bottled water to people. So we're doing those things. Well, any lead exposure is too much, of course. Too much. And it, clearly, uh, you've had a lot of people exposed to lead. I, I'm interested yes. in, there's two different uh, areas, I guess, here of trying to figure out what happened. The first one was the original decision on that. Um, where do you assign the responsibility uh, for the fact that this was uh, allowed to happen in the first place? Well, you know, I know there's an investigation going on about that right now. I, uh, so I'm going to let them say, find out who is actually responsible and where the breakdown came in because it could have happened on different levels. And that's what we're waiting to find out. And while um, 
you know, it's important for us to know so we don't make that same mistake. So we do have to see where the breakdown occurred. So I'm, I'm waiting to get that information, but I've really been focused on trying to make sure we're, we're doing, we're taking the right steps to make sure we have safe water for, for people as soon as possible. The emergency manager of Flint at the time, Darnell Early, who of course is now uh, in Detroit, um, yes. it, it seemed at first some were absolving him of responsibility, but somewhere along the lines, it seemed like he at least did not make the decision to not use uh, the, the Flint River system. Um, do you put resp any responsibility with him, or do you think it's too early to put that there? Well, or are you willing to absolve him of responsibility, I guess? Well, I'm. I you know what I'm like I said I'm waiting to see uh, what happens with this investigation I know the state was involved then so uh, we have to see um, I, I think there's some responsibility there I know there's some responsibility there because we were under emergency manager at that time uh, so I like I said I'm waiting to see what this investigation shows us so we don't let that breakdown happen if there was a breakdown here in the city as well but we're focused on what do we need to do to make sure we're protecting our citizens because that's been a huge issue. And the other thing is because of what's happened and there was that breakdown and the wrong information was given to the public, we have to work on rebuilding and reestablishing trust. And so that's what I'm focusing on is how do we uh, rebuild trust yeah. in the community because it's a huge issue and how do we ensure sure that the water that they drink is safe. Uh, no doubt about it. That's going to take a while to rebuild. But the other it, breakdown occurred after the original decision was made in how long it took to do something about it. Uh, I've, I, I've, had, I've said on this program and others have said that they can't imagine that if this had been in Lansing, for example, where all the lawmakers are, uh, lead wouldn't have been in the water two days before somebody did something about it. Uh, and, 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 you know, that was one of the things I campaigned on. So. Uh, and I always talked then when I was campaigning that I thought it should be a state of emergency. And so that was why uh, it, I wanted to make sure this was something that I, I took on because I talked about it. I believed it then and I still believe it now. So hopefully, you know, we're, we're in the process of getting this to the county commissioner so that can be supported well, by them and get moved up. To the why governor. did it take so long? Why did it take a private pediatrician doing his own testing to figure this out after, after residents had complained about the look and smell and taste of the water for so long? Why did it take so long? Yeah, well, that was the question that I also asked. Why did it take so long? But uh, I know that the standards that had been given to say water was okay were incorrect. Now, where does that come from? Is that from the state? That, and that's what the investigation is going to let us know. Uh, because we know when the switch happened in April, um, immediately people began talking about the taste, the yep. smell, yep. The, the, you know, um, how it felt on their skin and so people could tell immediately but we didn't have the scientific data to back it up and that was one of the problems so I'm really glad Virginia Tech got involved because that's when it really started uh, moving and then we find out that Hurley Medical Center and some of the other uh, medical facilities in in the city and in the county had been doing testing and that's what really got this ball rolling so if the yeah. if the grassroots yeah. organizers had not been vigilant like they were I don't know how long it would have taken and so we're so glad now to be to be getting this exposure because this is a public health crisis in the uh, city. Well, of since you've been elected, what have your conversations with the governor been like? Have you felt responsiveness since you've taken office? Uh, things are happening, and and we're happy for, for the support that we've gotten. It's just not enough. You know, we water filters are not going to fix the program. Uh, giving a diet for lead is not going to fix the, 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 the problem. So we need a long-term solution, and one is we need help with the infrastructure structure uh, that goes without you know we, we just know that uh, their infrastructure issues and the thing is you know if you look around the country the infrastructure is old in many places yeah. so I hope other places are taking note of what's going on here in the city of Flint um, but that's that's one of the issues and the other is we don't know how many kids have been exposed right. and so we're going to have to get some services uh, for those kids and their families. And so that's why the state of emergency is so important because we know Flint can't bear the financial responsibility for this. And so we're looking for state and especially federal support. Yeah. We need yeah. some help. Mayor, I really appreciate your time this morning. That's a great thumbnail of what is happening in Flint. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, have a Merry Christmas. We will talk to you in the new year. Thank you.
Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Mayor Karen, we were the mayor of Flint. When we come back, we'll talk about the latest on the political front as we uh, head toward next year's presidential election. This is Flashpoint on Local 4. We'll be right back.